Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I too am worried about uh, folks not saving enough for retirement, but I think this is, and, and perhaps there is a, a mechanism, you know, whereby we could do more with uh, businesses that are smaller, but the idea that we go to businesses that employ six, less than six people is, uh, it, it seems, it seems very intrusive to me. I think that I read a report recently about uh, somebody who wanted to open a lemonade, if a child wanted to open a lemonade stand in New York, they'd have to get 16 different permits to do so. And uh, whereas this, this bill may not apply to a child opening a lemonade stand, it's going to make it that much harder for somebody to open a small business. I have, I struggle to understand how this would apply to, uh, to temporary businesses and seasonal businesses and, people that employ high school students and uh, a, a whole range of details that, you know, if we had the luxury of actual, an actual uh, hearing and, and a debate and, and to, to speak to witnesses and experts about this rather than this, uh, this facade that we're putting up here today, where, which is really not a hearing at all. It's just a, uh, a, uh, 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 sit here and watch the, the folks on the other side ram this through with, with no, even they really don't understand the implications of it because we hadn't had a hearing. So this, this flaw, this process is fatally flawed. The idea that we would, you know, mandate that small businesses provide annuities to their employees is, is seems to me to be a gift to the insurance companies. Um, is once again is the the proposal that Democrats believe that they know better for the American people than the American people know for themselves, and that they're we're, we're creating here a, a, a bigger government, higher tax nanny state uh, because because the Democrats believe that the American people are helpless and they can't make decisions on their own. So, I, I, Mr. Chairman, I. I where I'm sympathetic to the problem, I am aghast by the process. I am aghast that we would include this in this massive $3.5 trillion tax increase, bloated government explosion that will, through placing additional burden on businesses, through making our country less competitive, it will slow or stifle our economy. And in this, this misguided effort to try to help American workers, what we will do is we will give them less opportunity. These big government programs always have that result. We will give them less opportunity. Their children will have less opportunity. They will have a government that is that much more in debt and over its head and therefore will be less apt and able to respond to future crises and to provide opportunities for children and grandchildren. So uh, where the, un the underlying idea here is, is certainly laudable and understandable, uh, I absolutely cannot support it in this context. And, uh, and, Perhaps, Mr. Chairman, because this is yours, uh, Bill, and you say you've worked on it for all that time, and you may have a better understanding. Nobody else in this room has an understanding of all the details of this. A massive bill like this that will apply to almost every business in this country, and it will make it that much harder to start a business in this country, and it will make this country less competitive in the world. Uh, a bill like this needs to be thoroughly vetted. It needs to have bipartisan agreement. And it doesn't need to be included in this massive reconciliation package that will be ran through with no Republican sort of support. Okay. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank the gentleman. And uh, just in point of reference and history on the committee here, uh, working with the Republican chairman at the time, to show how hard some of this has been, we sponsored the legislation that increased the individual's IRA contribution from $2,500 to $5,000. And, and I, uh, I will just quote specifically what it was. When the legislation started out, we were in the majority, so it was the Neil Thomas bill. 
And Republicans won in 94, it became the Thomas Neal bill. But I was only too happy to exceed sponsorship on it because I thought it was reasonable legislation and not whether or not it was a Republican or Democrat. And I hardly think that $46 billion over 10 years is a massive government pro- uh, program. So with that, let me talk. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you would yield just. Yes, I will. Yes. And, and I'm not saying that that is a massive government program in itself, but it's included as part of a $3.5 trillion wish list that uh, will all be bundled together and crammed through. And we, and I applaud all of our bipartisan efforts. I'm very proud of the SECURE Act and hoped that we would proceed with SECURE uh, 2 as well. But in lieu of that, we're, we've taken this bipartisan approach with no vetting and no and no uh, hearings, and we're just cramming it through. And I and I I, I object to it, and it's going to re, it's going to result in errors. It's going to result in unforeseen consequences, and it will result in it making it harder to do business in this country. I, gar- you, I guarantee the gentleman secure 2.0 is getting over the goal line before the end of this year as well. So a person who's had a profound influence on the Savers Credit is Judy Chu. Let me recognize her.